Welcome back to another Motobob video where today we're going to focus on one of my bikes, this Tiger 800 XCA. I bought it a couple of months ago because I found that I'm just doing so much motorway work, going to events, going to dealers, picking up press bikes. The Bonnie and the Trident weren't really cut out for that and this is absolutely perfect for it. Cruise control, a big screen, heated seats, heated grips. I also got full luggage with it with the liners and everything and so it's almost perfect for the job but any bike, in my opinion, can be improved ever so slightly with a few choice modifications. So I've been saving them up over the past few months and I thought I'd go through them all in one single video including a little bit about each install and we're going to go in price order ascending. But before we get started a massive thanks to XL Moto for sponsoring this video. They sell all sorts of gear and accessories and tools but they sent me a few of their products to help me make this video. So we've got their track day gazebo which was surprisingly easy to put up given its size. I got their absorbent mat as well which is also good for laying down parts and tools. A couple of paddock stands, which are super sturdy and it has to be said, quite cool looking. And even their XL Moto folding chair for when you need a sit down and a brew, which I often find I do when I'm getting frustrated doing these mods and tweaks. I'm not professionally qualified. And so <laughs> occasionally I get a little bit stuck. All of this awesome stuff will feature in this video and it kind of helped me turn my driveway into my own little alfresco workshop. It's also their Black Friday sale at the moment running right up to the 30th and there are some incredible deals with up to 70% off on riding gear, accessories, workshop tools and that's on their own stuff as well as some of the major top brands like Cardo and Revit and Dainese or Dainese and even next helmets which I've got a couple of and they're really very good. Some great gear and some incredible deals at the moment so do check it out through the link in the description. Now it's worth adding before we get started that if you decide to make some changes to your bike then you do so at your own risk. Flag them up with your insurer of course and also if you're not feeling particularly competent or confident in this area then it's probably best to get a professional to do it. The last thing you want to be doing is riding around on an unsafe bodged bike. I'll give you a quick overview of the install of each part but of course if you install anything yourself you should always consult the manufacturer's full instructions. First up some bobbins to make use of that paddock stand. Yes I have got a center stand on this bike but it's not that I can't get it up it's just that the paddock stand is a bit wider and therefore more stable when you're working on the bike. Also if you don't have a center stand then this is probably the easiest way to look after your chain. I put a bit of copper grease on here because you get a lot of grime off the back wheel and I don't want them to seize in there. Some people will probably say to use thread lock or something but copper grease for me and it is worth checking that your bike is compatible with the bobbins that you're buying and don't just get generic ones. There are a couple of thread sizes but also like the Tiger needs a bit of extra spacing because of where the mount sits in relation to the swing arm. So yeah super simple just screw them in but double check you got the right ones. Unfortunately I couldn't use the front stand because I've got a 21 inch front wheel on my Tiger but if you had regular 17 inch road wheels this would be awesome for the front as well. Now Speeder Angels who sponsor the channel make these awesome little dash protectors. Super easy to install you just clean the screen and remove any dust with the cloths and wipes that they provide. Peel the back of the Speedo protector and start to apply it. Use the card to get rid of any bubbles as you go. Now you do have to take your time to make sure the Speedo is completely clean and free of dust and also working out some of the bubbles takes a bit of patience but once you're done you've got a nice protective layer over that expensive TFT display. Worth adding that it does look like super reflective in some of this footage but it's just because of that big light I was using and then pointing the camera across it to where the light is. If you look at it from where the rider's sitting it's super clear you can barely tell it's there. They also make some water repellent mirror protectors which are great for riding in the rain. I fitted some of them on my Trident and I've got some to fit on this bike as as well. Now just this week it's gone significantly colder that few degrees that takes it into extremely uncomfortable territory if you're doing any decent mileage at speed. But I really want to ride this bike as much as I can through this winter and so while I had the bike apart it was a good chance to fit my heater gear tether. I just wire it straight to the battery and then have it hanging down at the side of the saddle just poke through the subframe. It's not connected to the ignition so you do have to remember to unplug your gear when the bike switched off but it is a really nice 
simple and reliable connection. I think it's the sort of thing that's worth spending a bit extra on and if I can get a few more days riding and making videos out of the winter then it's certainly worth it financially as a YouTuber for me. When you've got a lot of accessories and stuff plugged into the bike though and there's more coming in this video it is nice to be able to keep an eye on the battery. There's a DIN or Heller or BMW socket next to the key on the Tiger and I found this thing on Amazon so not only does it give you a couple of USB slots right up there by the bars but it also gives you a voltmeter as well. Now it is a nifty little thing but there are a couple of drawbacks. I'm not sure that it's properly weatherproof and also it's always on so despite being relatively low power it probably would eventually drain your battery. Not probably if you left it for like years it definitely would of course. That said you know still a neat little thing to have under the saddle or in the garage and it's a really quick way to check the battery without even having to take the seat off which is a massive effort. Speaking of massive efforts, cleaning your bike in winter is a proper chore. You have to do it loads and the bike gets super covered in grit and it all bakes on. It's a pain in the ass. Anything to make this arduous task easier is worth it in my book. So I fitted the pyramid plastic, plastics, pyramid plastics fender extender to the front mug guard and it keeps a bit of spray off the headers where it burns on, you know? Also, it does help to keep your feet a little bit dry, which is one of the most compromised parts of your anatomy when you're on a long ride. So the whole mug guard needs to come off and then you use some sticky pads to secure the fender extender in place and then you can also drill it and put some pop rivets in two. Simple but effective and again relatively easy to install if you take your time. I also bought their shot guard which glues into place sort of under the tray under the back of the seat there. Quite hard to film this one I couldn't really get a good angle on it but it's basically the same principle of keeping the shock a little bit cleaner by just blocking off the spray and dirt from the rear wheel. Now the indicators on the Tiger 800 are in a bit of a daft spot because if you dropped it not only would you sacrifice an indicator immediately but you'd also probably damage the side panel as well and you know that those things are going to be expensive when you get on the parts websites. I mean it's an obvious design flaw because Triumph moved them up to the head light on the Tiger 900. Fortunately for us lowly Tiger 800 owners there's advmoto.co who sell this clever little relocation kit. So like the Tiger 900 it moves them up to the headlight and out of harm's way. They've done a great job of the brackets on this it almost looks like factory fit. And then for down where the indicators used to be they give you a little flat 3D printed housing that also flashes so you sort of get a side indicator as well as the main indicators up at the top there. Now you do have to remove those side panels to fit it but I had them off anyway to fit one of the later mods in this video. Unfortunately though I can't show you the side indicators in action yet because I did while I was rushing and then I broke one of the soldering joints. Definitely one of those moments I was talking about where you just go for a little sit down and calm down before you move on to the next thing. Thankfully ADV Moto were kind enough to send out a replacement so it will be in action soon but in the meantime here's some other footage I found of how it looks. Now I did play with a few ideas for sat nav or navigation on this bike. This is the generation before Triumph integrated it into the dash. So I thought about having a dedicated device like a TomTom -tom type thing but they are a bit big and cumbersome for me and I also used to use a quad lock to mount my phone as many people do. On the one hand I like that it was very clean looking but there's now a problem with iPhone cameras and vibrations from the bike so if you want to mount it on the bars you have to fit their vibration dampener and then also you either have to run a wireless charger or run a cable. It all starts to get a bit bulky and it sort of defeats the original purpose of the quad lock being so streamlined looking. So again a channel sponsor but the regular Beeline Moto mount is the best option for me at the moment. It's super easy to put on, it looks clean and uncluttered, no worries about rain damaging your phone or getting into USB sockets and things like that. It doesn't hammer your phone battery and it's easy to swap between bikes if I get to another dealer and get on a demo bike. Link to my full video about it in the description. Now the stock lower engine bars on the XCA don't protect much of the fairing or tank so I decided to fit something with a little more coverage. These bars are from Outback Motor Tech and although they aren't those full-on bars that wrap directly around the tank, if you laid the bike on a flat surface like the road they'd hold it up just enough to keep the tank off the ground. Now it uses the same mounting points as the stock Triumph bars for the lower parts but the top, these mount to the engine through bolts and they're a little bit more tricky to get at. You'll need some socket extensions, some deep sockets, a universal joint all in unison with one another 
and it's a little bit of fiddling and patience to get to them. Also, a torque wrench is super important with those bolts going into the engine. Aluminium strips really easily and you really don't want to strip these threads. And so look, to be honest, this was the least fun install for all of those reasons. A little bit more stressful. Totally worth it for a bit more protection and they feel way more robust than the standard bars. But if you're unsure whether you've got the right tools or the confidence, then this is one of those jobs that's probably best left to a professional. Now I use Pegas Moto as a GPS tracker, not only to keep an eye on my bike when I'm not at home to make sure nobody's nicked it, but also to record rides and routes and look back at data, especially doing filming and photo and that sort of thing. It's really useful if I ride past somewhere that looks quite scenic, I might want to go back and get some shots there at a later date. I can look back at the diary or journal of rides and routes and sort of pinpoint it on the map and I find that extremely useful. You can also see lean angle and acceleration and braking and you can use it as a lap timer on the track. So loads of great features and it's a great little product. Now they do sponsor the channel, but I can wholeheartedly recommend it. It's a great app. There's no subscription fee either. And also it's super simple to install. I did get a bit of stick though for putting it under the saddle when I made my installation video, which I'll link to in the description. A lot of people were saying, oh, like someone's going to steal your bike and that's the first place they'll look and then they'll just chuck it on the floor. Fair enough, but look, I've got time constraints for <laughs> filming this stuff, so I can't be taking the whole bike apart. So while I was doing this video and I had to take some panels off and whatnot, I found a little bit more of a difficult place to access to stick it on. I also zip tied the cable in a few places so that it'd be hard to dislodge by tugging on the cable. Someone's still going to say, oh, well, you've uploaded a video to the internet of where you've put it and then they'll watch that and then they'll come and steal your bike and then they'll find it. Don't worry about it. Another product I've installed on a previous bike as well is the Inov K3 dash cam system. I had it fitted to my Trident before I had this bike. To be honest, that bike is so minimal and clean and there aren't really any external bolts. So it's quite hard to find good places to mount the cameras. But on the Tiger, I mean, look at it. Visually, it's not exactly um, uncluttered. And so, yeah, there's a lot more choice when it comes to mounting points. There's a lot of space under the saddle as well on this bike. If you take that place, off for the top box actually there's another extra stash which would be great for putting all this stuff but i put it a little further forward so that i could just pop the seat off and plug things in and reset it or whatever I might need to do. And I'm really happy with how they look on the bike now. I've put the front one on the peripheral light bracket so it looks almost like it was made to go there. The rear, I took one of the security Torx bolts out of the top box mount plate, replaced the washer with the mounting bracket for the camera and then it just sits right in the middle of the bike so you get really good coverage there. Run the cable neatly under the plate and it just looks really well integrated and not messy so I'm super happy with this. The GPS sensor just sticky pads to the side of the tray there and then you've got the remote that just mounts onto the mirror bolt. Very very happy with it on this bike and I think it offers me not only security or like you know potentially footage that could be useful in an insurance claim but also as a content creator if there are any sort of um, serendipitous japes and mishaps then I'll be able to just record them on the bike and that's quite nice to know that you'll never miss anything because it's always running. Also it comes with a microphone that I've mounted under the saddle to capture the sweet, sweet tones of my new exhaust. Now, I thought I was maturing a bit by buying an adventure bike, but I couldn't resist fitting something at least a little tiny bit louder than the stock exhaust. Now, to be fair to them, they've done a decent job trying. It actually sounds quite angry. <laughs> But this Scorpion circuit can, it makes the perfect exhaust upgrade for me. Firstly, it looks absolutely spot on and it doesn't have like a band around it. They've put a proper bracket on it. Secondly, it's E-marked and road legal if you keep the baffle in. So not only does it keep you on the right side of the law, but also for long trips on the motorway, it's annoying to have a constant loud drone. So sticking the baffle in can be helpful. But yeah, thirdly, pop the baffle out and it's got that extra bit of meatiness that gives you that grin on your face when you're going up and down the gears on a decent bit of road. <laughs> It 
really isn't a lot louder than the standard exhaust, but it just gives it that extra depth and bass, which is very satisfying on the ears. Very easy to install. It'd be even easier without the pannier racks, but you just loosen a couple of bolts to get the old one off and then pretty much just replace it with the new one. No need to have the bike remapped with this one either, but of course that can vary by bike. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough of the new bike. I can't wait to shoot more content with it. If you've got suggestions for other accessories and mods and tweaks, then do let me know down in the comments below. My focus with this bike is going to be more so motorway and distance and comfort and carrying camera gear and less so the sort of hardcore off-road adventure bike dream that we're always sold. So let me know your suggestions down in the comments below. And if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.